Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick the Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about motorcycles and getting a road test on your motors or passing a road test on your motorcycle. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And we're going to get going on that here momentarily. Dave is here. Uh, my good mate Tim is here. And for those of you who don't know, this is VEDA month, video every day for the month of April. <laughs> and Tim was going to do it and he kind of got me started on it. Uh, I'm still debating whether I'm going to do it or not. I didn't get a video up yesterday, so I'm off by one day. So I'd have to do one day with two videos to catch up to VEDA. So here we are. And uh, if you have questions about road tests, we're going to answer those as well tonight. And we're going to answer questions about passing a road test. So if you have any questions at all, please uh, leave those in the comments. Uh, if you're watching for the first time in our new to Smart Drive test, Welcome to Smart Drive Test. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Uh, hit that subscribe button so you get access to all the videos. And as well, make sure you hit that bell. That way you'll get instant notification when I get the videos up for you. And if you're watching on the replay, leave us a comment of where you might be in the world. And we'll be getting going with all of this momentarily. Carlos, uh, I don't have a motorcycle as of yet. I do have a license. I have owned motorcycles in the past. And... Uh, Excuse me. And I'm currently in the market for getting a motorcycle because I'm going to start doing motorcycle videos to be teaching you how to pass a road test on a motorcycle. So that's what I'm working on, Carlos. Uh, Dave, do we get a video every single day? <laughs> uh, I, I got another 24 hours to think about that, Dave, and uh, whether I can do a video every day this month because there's a lot of other stuff that's going on as well. So... Yeah, I'll just uh, keep that in mind here. All right. And uh, for everybody that's passed a road test in the last week, congratulations on that. I do know that I've been absent the last week. I was away on holidays for uh, March break with my kids, and uh, we had a trip to Washington State, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in the discussion after I do the presentation and whatnot. So without further ado, uh, I think we're going to get started here unless other people have questions. Dirt bike. How did you find the dirt bike, Dave? Did you did you ride it on road or did you ride it off road? <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. So okay, so I was just waiting for Dave to answer the question here about dirt bikes, but I think I'll I am going to transition over here to the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, just bear with me here and get this going. All right. One sec. There we go. All right. So starting on the motorcycle road test. So for those of you who might be going for a road test on a motorcycle, I know for those of us here in the interior of British Columbia, it's not going to be anytime soon because we still had snow this morning, but there are places we were in Washington state, as I was mentioning previously last week, and it is quite lovely in Washington state. It's also very nice on Vancouver Island. We were there as well in its t-shirt weather. So those types of places will be thinking about getting their motorcycle out of storage and proceeding with a motorcycle road test. So if you're going to go for a road test, there are several things that you're going to have to be able to do uh, that are quite different than getting a, mo a car license. And one of the requirements of a motorcycle license is that you're going to have to do closed circuit work, which means that you're going to have to work in a parking lot with cones and you're going to have to do straight line riding, uh, curves, turns, figure eights, and those types of things. And you're going to have to be able to do all of that successfully in order to pass a road test. And just next slide here. For those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test and don't know me, my name is Rick August. I do have a PhD in legal history. For those of you who don't know, legal history is the study of courts, policing, and prisons. And my expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic, oddly enough. <laughs> I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s. I drove truck in uh, Canada and the United States in 2002. I moved to Australia and while I was there I drove Greyhound for a year before I went to university and while I was at university part-time drove for V-Line which is a regional transit company that moves passengers between uh, sort of hooks the trains up where you know sort of I drove out to Ballarat and brought passengers back through Bacchus Marsh and whatnot. 
I've been a licensed commercial, uh, licensed driving instructor, commercial driving instructor since 1997. Uh, my expertise is really air brakes and big trucks and buses. Uh, I've done car as well and I worked as a driver rehabilitation specialist for a couple of years while I was doing my undergrad in London, Ontario. And uh, one of the upcoming videos is a woman I went down to Washington State actually to do an interview with and she has uh, low vision. So I've worked with people in, in, uh, who've had brain injuries, low vision, people who are driving with hand controls and those types of things and helping them as well. So that's, that's who I am and that's my background and today we're going to talk about motorcycles. The first thing you need to do when you show up for a road test is, uh, and I've said this before, is, is you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. So when you do show up, you want to show up with good equipment, not just a motorcycle that is operating and in good condition, but you also want to work, uh, you know, have helmet, a motorcycle jacket, you want to have gloves. If you don't have a motorcycle jacket, you want at least a heavy jacket that's going to protect you in the event that you come off the motorcycle. Have sturdy boots or I wouldn't recommend wearing shoes on your motorcycle. I would recommend that you wear boots. If you don't have motorcycle boots, wear hiking boots. I know that for some of you who are going to be getting into riding a motorcycle that buying some of this gear can be expensive. Helmets can run anywhere from you know, a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars just for the helmet. You know, you gotta buy gloves and you gotta buy a jacket and a jacket can be 500 to a thousand dollars and you gotta buy, buy pants. So buy the best gear that you can and also think about if you can't afford the gear, what can you make do with? So instead of buying a motorcycle jacket, can you wear a heavy corduroy jacket or something like that is at least going to protect you if you go down in the event of a fall. And as well, if you show up for a road test, remember they're going to be looking at what kind of gear you're wearing. Uh, and some driving examiners may form an opinion about whether you're ready to ride or not. So think about that if you're going. And if you can borrow some gear, that might be something that you want to do as well when you show up for road test day. <clears throat> All right, so I did sort of mention at the beginning that road test procedures, they begin in a closed circuit area and there are slow speed maneuvers that you have to be able to do before they're going to let you go out on the road and do the road portion of the road test. It's in a closed circuit area so it's often in a parking lot and they're going to set up cones and you're going to have to drive down in a straight line. You're going to have to show that you can have good control of all of the primary controls on the motorcycle and the primary controls consist of the front and rear brakes and the rear brake is controlled with your foot. The front brake is controlled with your hand. Uh, both of those are on the right side of the motorcycle. You're going to have to work the throttle and the throttle and the handbrake, the front handbrake are in the same place on the right side of the handlebars. On the left side is the clutch and you're going to have to work uh, the gear selector as well and you're going to have to work that with your left foot. So you're going to have to be con competent with all of these controls because they're going to get you to do slow speed maneuvers. On most road tests as well, they're going to get you to push the motorcycle and they're going to get you to demonstrate that you can do that. So you're gonna do slow speed maneuvers and then you're gonna go up for a ride. Most motorcycle tests in this day and age, they're going to put a vest on you, a high vis vest. The high vis vest has a radio on it and they will follow you in a chase car. So there'll be two examiners in the chase car. One will be driving and the other one will be observing you as you're doing your on road road test. And it's not a two way communication in terms of the radio. Most of the time it's just one way communication and they're just giving you instructions to turn left, turn right. Uh, proceed straight at the intersection and those types of things. So you'll be responsible while you're riding your motorcycle to do all the lane positioning and turns and communication and signaling and observation and all of those things while you're driving. Now I already touched on the fact that you're going to have to demonstrate that you have good control of the motorcycle. Pushing the motorcycle, slow speed maneuvers, slow turns, counter steering, all of this uh, all of these maneuvers and abilities and techniques are going to be required for the purposes of a road test. You're going to have to show that you can clutch, shift, brake, steer, throttle. You're going to have to show that you can brake with just the front brake and you're going to have to demonstrate that you can brake with just the rear brake uh, during the portion of the road test because if you can't pass the closed circuit portion of your road test, they're not going to let you go out on the road and operate the motorcycle in traffic because good control of the motorcycle at slow speed is an indication of whether you can ride in traffic or not and be safe. Alright, 
So one of the first things they're going to get you to do is they're going to get you to push the motorcycle and whether they get you to push the motorcycle from the right or left, you need to be confident with this and this is one of the things that I strongly suggest that you're able to do is to go out to a parking lot and push the motorcycle around on push it from both sides, make sure that you can maintain balance because one of the things on a motorcycle obviously that's important is that you are able to balance the motorcycle especially at low speeds because my karate sensei used to say you know anybody can do it fast and you know they can can you do it slow because doing it slow it takes much more precision and accuracy in terms of being able to handle the bike control the bike and balance the bike so you're gonna to have to be able to do all of that as well you're gonna to have to be able to sit on the bike and you're gonna to have to be able to push it backwards because oftentimes you're gonna to have to move it out of parking spaces and those types of things and for the purposes of the road test, one of the maneuvers that you, one of that maneuvers that you have to do is you have to park the motorcycle. So you have to pull up along the curb, pull out, and then park the back the bicycle in or back, back the motorcycle in rather, so the rear tire is touching the curb and it has to be on a slight angle in a parking space. And the reason for that is so that other vehicles, mostly car drivers, can see your motorcycle and see that in fact it is parked in the space. So that's one of the maneuvers you have to do for the purposes of a road test. You have to demonstrate on a road test that you can do straight line driving up and down the parking lot. Excuse me, turn at a sharp angle, come back down. So oftentimes you're gonna have to brake, you're gonna have to brake with the front brake and you're gonna have to brake with the rear brake and demonstrate that you have control of the motorcycle. You're gonna have to turn the motorcycle, turn and sharp turns around the end. They may get you, if they have enough room, in the parking lot, they may get you to counter steer, and that's something that you're gonna to have to know for the purposes of a road test, and I can talk about that a little bit later in the discussion. As well, you're gonna to have to demonstrate that you have good control of the primary controls. You can shift the bike, you can clutch the brake, you can get the bike started without stalling it, you can stop the bike without stalling it, you can coordinate the clutch and the brake, you can, or the clutch and the brakes, and I use that plural because front brake and rear brake are separate, and you can as well, uh, throttle and clutch at the same time and make all of that happen and move the bike around and still have balance and control of the motorcycle. <laughs> and that slide keeps coming up. Okay, uh, while you're riding the motorcycle, you're going to have to have good observation. Again, I come back to any road test, regardless of class, you're going to have to have the four components of a road test, observation, communication, uh, speed management and space management and you're gonna have to shoulder check on a motorcycle same as you do in a car every time that you turn the, the motorcycle around a corner you're gonna have to turn uh, you're gonna have to do two shoulder checks anytime you move laterally lane changes or in a parking lot or slow speed maneuvers you're gonna have to shoulder check minimum two times you're gonna have to look far down the road you're gonna have to observe correctly when you're doing turns and especially left hand turns and be able to judge gap correctly and you're going to have to check the mirrors and while you're driving on road the examiner that's in the vehicle that's observing you is going to be looking for all of this now the guy at the bottom who's doing the racing turn there don't do that on your road test but you can see the person the motor the, the rider here at the top making a right hand turn and has moved over to the center of the lane part of your road test and part of being successful on your motorcycle road test is is that you're going to have proper lane positioning so know that for the purposes of your road test you're going to need to position the motorcycle in the lane so that other vehicles aren't going to be tempted to pass you as well the reason that you position your motorcycle in the lane is for high visibility because you need to be seen by other road users and drivers on the roadway and that's the reason for lane positioning because you want to be as visible as possible this is one of the number one reasons why motorcycles get hit first of all other drivers aren't expecting them and second motorcycles are not in a position on the roadway where they are most visible and that's important for you in terms of your lane positioning and you're always sort of changing that lane positioning depending on what you're doing and where you're going on the roadway the second skill to pass a road test and be successful on a road test for motorcycles is communication and you communicate to other road users with signals lights hand gestures appropriate hand gestures of course your horn and the position of your motorcycle on the roadway. All of this is going to communicate to other traffic and other road users and drivers what you're doing on the roadway. So communication obviously dovetails with observation for smart riding and making sure that you get home alive. So make sure that you do all of these things that you signal, you use lights, you use hand gestures, positioning of the vehicle on the roadway and the horn. 
<laughs> oh, excuse me. So this is uh, imperative and make sure you have all this in place. And again, uh, anytime that you move the bike laterally, make sure that you signal and you have three flashes on the signal before you move the motorcycle over to the next lane or you know half a block from a turn before you turn the motorcycle around a corner so that you can turn. All right, space management, I already talked a little bit about lane positioning. If you are riding in a group, as you can see here, you wanna straddle so that you're not beside other motorcycles. Uh, most jurisdictions will not let you ride beside other motorcycles. You have to ride in a straddle uh, lane position as these this group of motorcycles is here. Stopping in traffic, same on a motorcycle as with other vehicles, you have to stop back so that you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the roadway. Don't get near other fixed objects, don't get near other uh, uh, vehicles on the roadway and treat other motorcycles on the roadway as you would a car. Give them complete space. Don't you know, pass them in the same lane. That's an automatic fail on a road test. I can guarantee you in a motorcycle, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you're going to pass another motorcycle on the roadway, you need to, need to get completely in the other lane and then come back and pass them around the front. So know that for the purposes of a road test and really that's what you should be doing even uh, once you get your license and start riding your motorcycle for purposes of safety and purposes of visibility. Because remember, you wanna be seen by other traffic. Okay, speed management. Uh, you want to drive the speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less, and you want to have appropriate speeds, speeds for turns. And for those of you who are now riding in the spring and just getting your motorcycle out, uh, make sure that uh, you watch for gravel and other debris on the roadway and don't lean your motorcycle over if there's gravel or debris on the roadway. And as well, be very careful with using the front brake because if you hit some gravel or debris, you could kick the front wheel out and uh, you could you lose control of your motorcycle as well when you're stopping and you're putting your feet down on the roadway be careful of what's on the roadway because if you have the bike leaned over a little bit and you're expecting your foot to go down on something solid and you've got good grip uh, you might get on a slippery line marking or something like that and then you kind of lose balance and lose control and let me tell you if you drop a motorcycle over it can be quite a challenge to get it back up so those are that's kind of a high level overview of motorcycles and getting your license and just remember the four components for any motorcycle are good control of the vehicle, the motorcycle in this case, uh, slow speed maneuvers, and then going out on the roadway. And then the four components of out on the roadway will be observation, communication, speed management, and space management. And you need all of those pieces in place in order to pass your motorcycle road test. So good luck in your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So we'll just transition back over here and, uh, I'll answer questions that people may have about passing a road test. And I just get back here. There we go. Okay. And we haven't come back yet, but we're good. And Corey is here. Hi, Corey. Corey is looking at, or is moderating. And if anybody has any questions or wants to have more information about riding, uh, a motorcycle or getting videos, Corey will get those for you. Corey's really good at that. Ah, Ludwig, excellent. Ludwig passed his ro his motorcycle or his road test today. Uh, where Ludwig did you pass your road test? Where in the world did you were you successful on that? So that's really great. All right, so. It seems that people are still away for Easter. People are getting ready to go back to school tomorrow with their kids and those types of things. Not too many questions tonight. So, uh, yeah. Okay, Ludwig, where did you get your... Uh, your? Where in the world did you get your license? All right, so I was talking to you earlier about the fact that we went down to Washington State last week. I did an interview with Jen and Jen has uh, low vision, so her she has a disability, and she's getting her license. She did have a license in the past, and what happened was is that they changed the requirement for minimum vision standards in the state of Washington, and Jen lost her license for a period of five years, and she recently discovered by going to the eye doctor that um, 
her vision had improved, so she's going back to get her road, her license again. So essentially, what I went down is and did an assessment with her, and you know she drove fine and uh, it was good, and she's very aware of her limitations and whatnot, and helped her out a little bit and gave her some uh, strategies to help her improve. Uh, Ludwig Glendale, where where is Glendale in the world? Which country? <laughs> Uh, so we did that, did an interview, and then we drove up to uh, Vancouver Island, and we visited some friends there, and we made a trip back, and all was good, and it was lots of fun. So it was nice to just kind of get away and uh, spend some time driving and not, not working. I didn't realize how much I was working until I kind of got away. Oh, Dave, how do they road test with the radio on the motorcycle? So essentially, they put a high-vis vest on you, and there's just the radio is, there's a pocket in the high-vis vest, and the radio is in the pocket. And it basically is on your chest, and the person uh, in the vehicle behind you, the chase car, uh, basically just talks to you on the radio, and you can hear it. So there we go. Okay, Glenville, Glendale, California. So Ludwig, how did you find the road test? Was it, was it challenging, or was it fairly straightforward in terms of what you had to do there? So we did that, and uh, one of the other things that I'll tell you, <laughs> uh, if you're going through across an international border, uh, make sure that you have all the paperwork you need before you get you show up at the international border. Uh, I'm a, I'm a single dad, so I went across the border with my kids, and of course last week I was really busy and uh, didn't get a letter from my from the kid's mother that I was gonna go into the United States. And of course you need a letter that you're taking your kids into the United States. Otherwise they think that you're absconding with your children. <laughs> and uh, so we got to the border and I handed them the passports. I had all passports for myself and my two kids. And uh, the first thing they said to me after that was, uh, do you have a letter uh, from, your, from the kid's mother that you can take the kids into the States? Of course I didn't, I forgot to. So of course we got pulled in at the border and uh, had to go inside and uh, <laughs> so it was, it was a kind of a comedy of errors after that that uh, happened and I mean first of all one of the things that you always do when you show up at the border is make sure that you shave and that you have a shower because you don't want to show up at an international border and look like you just uh, you know just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> your clothes aren't ironed and those types of things. So make sure that you look good when you show up at an international border. And I did. So I had nice clothes on. I had shaved that morning. I had had a shower. I smelled good. And uh, so the woman inside, the border patrol person inside, took the key to the car and went out and went through the car again. And uh, came back in and uh, starts asking me questions. I mean, the first question was, is that why I didn't have my car key on a car key on a ring, on a key ring. And the reason I don't have my car key on a, on a ring is because I don't like the key jingling in the ignition while I'm driving. So there's, there was that part that. And the, second, the other thing that was even funnier was that there's empty beer cans underneath the seat. And the reason that there's empty beer cans under the seat is because the kids and I are collecting beer cans to save money to go to Disney. And they get thrown in the car and they get forgotten about and anyway they run underneath the seat and whatnot. <laughs> so that was the second thing. And then... Uh, what was the other thing? Oh yes, yeah, and she asked me what my primary resident, what my, what I did for a living. I said, oh, I'm a YouTuber, and then uh, so she says, oh, well, you're a commercial entry, which is which is interesting because I was going down to Washington State to shoot a video, and uh, so she goes back, she talks to her supervisor, she comes back up, and I'm like, oh, here it comes, commercial entry, shooting a video. It's going to be like, you know, three or four thousand dollars for me to go into the United States to shoot a video. And uh, so she comes back and she says, you know, you're, you, you know, normally if you were going to go into the States and shoot a video and you were going to edit the video and do all the work there, you would be deemed a commercial entry. And I was like, oh, and here it comes. And she said, if it was deemed a commercial entry, you would have to spend, you would have to pay us $13.75, <laughs> which I kind of chuckled about. I went only $13.75. Well, I, can, I think I can afford that. Anyway, in the end, after I answered all the questions and whatnot, didn't get rattled by her questions or her line of, you know, putting me sort of on the defense because when I was driving truck, I mean, I was through the international border between Canada and the United States five or six times a week. So, you know, I knew to yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, answer the questions, show up, always looking good, you know, shaved and, you know, nice shirt on and those types of things. So I always did that when I showed up at the international border. And then finally, as you know, have a good trip and, and away we go. But, you know, it was a new experience for my children sitting in the in the border 
Shaq there and having all these questions being asked and being delayed. And I mean, we were there for probably 25 minutes before they deemed that we were not <laughs> an issue with the border. So there we go. Uh, yes, uh, Dave, most of the time they will ask you why you're going into the United States. If you're going to go across into the United States, they want to know why you're there. They want to know how long you're going to stay. They want to know if you're going to purchase anything while you're there, and they're going to they're going to ask you all those questions because they they're going to deem how long you can stay there because uh, most places you can only visit for 30 days or something like that before you need a visa or you need some reason why you're there. So yeah, uh, Christian, yes, you feel a lot safer on a car than you do in a motorcycle. Yes, and rightly so because on a motorcycle, Christian, you're 35 times more likely to die. In a car, in a in a crash on a motorcycle, than you are, are in a car. So yes, uh, that's how you that's how it goes. Okay, Dave, and you know something, Dave? Uh, I should show you how to do that. And I actually thought about that when I went down through the states, but I was so busy and I was so just like when we left here, I didn't, I wasn't really together. But I'll definitely do a video on that on how to go through the United States. Uh, motorbike test similar to the car test. Uh, the motorbike test is somewhat similar to the car test. However, the, the component that's different in the, on the motorcycle is that they do these slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot that you are not required to do as part of the car. Most of the slow speed maneuvers that you're going to do in a car, you're going to go out on the road and do them. You're going to do your parallel parking, you're going to do your two point reverse turn, your three point turn and those types of things in the car. You're going to do that out on the road. But on a motorcycle, they're going to get you to do uh, the road test, slow speed maneuvers, and demonstrate that you can control the bike, you have balance on the bike, and you have uh, skill in, in, in handling and working the primary controls of the, vehicle, of the motorcycle, the clutch, the throttle, the brakes, front and rear brakes independently. So that's how it's different than a car. But I mean, essentially on the road, one of the main things that's different on a motorcycle is, is that they're looking for you uh, to position the motorcycle for maximum visibility is what they're looking for. And one of the other ways um, is that uh, one of the other ways to make yourself more visible on a motorcycle besides high vis gear is to stand up on the motorcycle. If you get in a situation where you think that you're not being seen by other drivers, uh, you want to have movement and you want to make yourself bigger. And one of the ways to make yourself bigger is just to sort of, you know, lift your shoulders and pump yourself up. And I mean, you can essentially stand up or lift yourself up on the motorcycle. So that's another way that you can make yourself bigger on a motorcycle and more visible. Uh, how heavy is a motorcycle? Well, Dave, it depends on what kind of motorcycle you have. Some of the smaller bikes are only going to weigh about three, 400 pounds. Some of the bigger motorcycles are going to weigh anywhere from 800 to 1200 pounds. Some of these big like Gold Wings and Harley Davidsons, they're going to be really heavy, heavy bikes. So know that. Um... <laughs> Uh, Dave, yeah, you can just say that you're going into the States on vacation. Usually if you're going on vacation though, they, they're going to ask you where you're going to go if you're going into another country. So it doesn't matter if it's if you're entering into the United States or you're entering into Mexico or you're in Europe and you're going from, you know, one country to another country, they're still going to ask you what you're, what you're going there for and what you're doing. And if you're going on vacation, they're going, they want to know where you're going on vacation and, and how long you're going to be there and what kinds of things you're going to do. So... Uh, how many miles do you get on a motorcycle? Uh, some of the motorcycles will get 50, 60 miles to the gallon. Some of them are pretty good. Some some of the bigger ones, not so much. They're probably like a small car and those types of things, but they do get fairly decent uh, fuel mileage. Uh, the problem with motorcycles, obviously, is, is that you know if you have a windshield, it's not so bad, but if you don't have a windshield, you're you're subject to the elements, you know, rain and sleet and ice and those types of things. So. Uh, know that, <laughs> that you know you do want to dress for the weather because you are exposed to the elements and those types of things so know that as well in terms of uh, riding a motorcycle and passing a, a road test and whatnot so yeah so I don't think too many people are gonna have questions here so that's great Ludwig passed his road test and uh, was successful that's really great and uh, yeah, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this up early tonight. Uh, not too many people are asking questions. I think most people are still sort of winding down from Easter and those types of things. 
Uh, Corey, yes, a motorcycle, a passenger on a motorcycle really, really affects how the motorcycle handles, especially if you get somebody on the back of the motorcycle who's not uh, good at what they call going sort of inert, going still on the motorcycle and being able to move with the motorcycle. Uh, so know that, uh, and this is why we have graduated licensing programs for motorcycles so that they can't have passengers on the vehicle while they're in the novice phase and while they're learning how to drive. Uh, it's just too difficult for new drivers to be able to handle everything that they need to be able to do on a motorcycle, to be able to balance the motorcycle, to be able to ride the motorcycle correctly, to be able to use the throttle and the clutch and the brake and all of those types of things. And, uh, so that's one of the things that's the reason why the graduated licensing program so yes they they react very differently and the other thing about having passengers that that's a really excellent question Corey uh, in terms of motorcycles one of the other things about motorcycles is and you need to look at the owner's manual on the motorcycle uh, if you put passengers on the vehicle or you put weight on the motorcycle uh, oftentimes you have to put more air pressure in the tires and you have to some of the hydraulic uh, some of the shocks will have to be adjusted as well uh, for better riding performance and handling and whatnot while you're having more weight on the bike. So know that as well. Uh, you, you, you and S, so how do you feel about motorcycles who lane split? Uh, personally, I'm not on board with lane splitting. I, I, you know, I don't like being in confined spaces. I especially don't like being in confined spaces on motorcycles and in cars and especially even more so on trucks. So I'm not a huge advocate of lane splitting. I know that it's part of the driving culture in Australia. I know it's part of the driving culture in California and other places, but I'm not a huge advocate. So there we go. Okay. Um, yes, very much, Dave. That's why you get a closed helmet. <laughs> Yes, motorcycles are much, you know, if you don't get a huge bike and they're on, on all decked out and that sort of thing, I mean, obviously with motorcycles, you know, the sky's the limit. It's like cars. You can buy very expensive cars as well. But I mean, you know, probably for three, four thousand dollars $4,000, you could probably get yourself into a motorcycle with all the gear that you need, and they're fairly inexpensive to operate. Now, no is a new driver that if you buy something over 400cc, and there's lots of bikes out now that are 390cc, if you buy something over 400cc, that's kind of the, the cutoff point for insurance. Once you get over 400cc, they're looking to charge you more for insurance, so know that as well if you get into a motorcycle. Uh, soon, Dave, here in the next, uh, I'm looking for it to warm up a little bit, so it might be another four weeks before I get the first motorcycle video, but we're certainly going to do that. And what else I've got on the back burner here, not on the back burner, but in the can, the proverbial video can, uh, Dave, is I have a video with a mate of mine, Alex Matuzak, and uh, he goes through all the gear with us, so he's going to do that, and we've got that video up, and I try and get that up really shortly, within the next week or two, so working on that as well. Yes, uh, yes, that point is very valid, Dave, in terms of lane splitting and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, and that's the other reason, you know, I've had this question before in terms of why do we shoulder check to the left when we're making left-hand turns and those types of things. And one of the reasons that we do that, especially in the summertime and spring and other times, is because people cutting off on the inside and especially motorcycles that are lane splitting. So that's the reason that you want to be... Uh, shoulder checking regardless of which way you're turning so know all of that as well uh yes actually dave that's a really good idea after uh i do the video with alex on terms of what kind of gear you should be considering and doing and those types of things perhaps what i can do and i'll i'll start looking for that is to find somebody in a motorcycle shop and maybe uh, some used gear and those types of things uh, because you can save a lot of money on buying some of this stuff used because a lot of people buy motorcycles and they ride them for a year or two or they don't like them or they buy another uh, motorcycle, they buy a bigger bike. So that's another thing that happens and whatnot. So yeah, so we can do all of that. Oh, Corey, uh, the uh, the examiners for the road test on the motorcycle uh, follow you in a chase car. So there's actually two examiners. One's driving and the other one sits in the passenger seat and observes what you're doing while you're riding your motorcycle and gives you instructions via the radio that they have on the uh, the high-vis vest that they give you. So that's how they do the road test. And now that, now that I've told you that, you'll see them around Winnipeg. They'll be riding around and, and they'll have... Um, 
uh, I, forgive me, I forgot what the the testing authority is in Winnipeg, but you'll see the vehicle and it's following a motorcycle and the motorcyclist will have a high-vis vest on most, you know, it's actually like one of those flaggers vests. So there you go. So that's, that's what they'll be doing. Uh, Dave, uh, I don't recall if, I don't recall a lot of lane splitting in Toronto. I don't think Toronto has lane splitting culture for motorcycles. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, and I'll definitely have a look when I head down that way this summer and uh, just see that. Okay, so yeah, I don't think there's any more questions. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to leave it there for tonight. And uh, congratulations to everybody who has passed a road test in the last week. If you're new to Smart Drive Test, uh, definitely give it a thumbs up and give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and, and be sure to hit that bell as well. That way you'll get instant notification uh, when I get the videos up for you. Uh, is, uh, Dave, yes, insurance is cheaper on motorcycles as a compo as opposed to cars. But again, do some investigation into that. Do some research, and as well, uh, look for the uh, the cutoff. The cutoff here in British Columbia is 400 cc's, 400 cubic centimeter engines on the motorcycles. It might be different in Ontario there. But that's what it is here in British Columbia. And actually most uh, manufacturers of motorcycles uh, have those specific motorcycles that just come in to, under the requirement for insurance. And that way they're gonna save you a bit of money. And if you're just getting started on a motorcycle, actually a 390, a 390 cc motorcycle is a good motorcycle to get started on. It's got enough power that it'll take you up and down the road and get you going and lots of oomph and zoom and those types of things. And uh, it won't cost you an arm and a leg on a, on insurance so that's what you want to do in terms of getting a motorcycle and look at insurance and those types of things okay so again congratulations if you passed a road test uh, if you got any road test questions coming up and those types of things or you're watching on the replay by all means leave me a comment down in the comment section there I'll get to your comments and questions and I'll answer your questions and whatnot and uh, make sure you head over to the smart drive test website uh, www.smartdrivetest.com courses over there pass your road test first time uh, a special on that so look at that you can pick that up for about 28 30 bucks and uh, guaranteed to pass your road test first time and uh, be successful on your road test and get your license because now that we're coming into spring lots of people will be going for the road tests and whatnot and looking to be successful and pass first time so we'll help you do that and make sure that you get your license and get some freedom here so have any questions leave us a comment more than happy to help you out and whatnot and uh, be successful and remember pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.